Heather, welcome back to the Soccer Queens podcast. What's up? <laughs> it's always a pleasure to have you on and you're a fellow performance coach to female athletes. You are also a mother of two amazing girls. So there's a lot of insight to be shared today. And Heather and I are specifically going to talk about how parents can really instill healthy habits, uh, namely with nutrition in their kids. Because I get a lot of complaints, oh, my kid doesn't eat healthy. Oh, my kid is always eating like crap. Oh, my kid doesn't eat breakfast and know how to fuel properly. And I truly believe that a lot of these behaviors start at a young age and they're instilled very early on to set our young athletes up for success. But these are also behaviors that are inspired. And a lot of kids are watching us adults, whether you're a parent, a coach like myself, I'm, I'm not exempt from this discussion. Um, it's really important adults lead the way because modeled behavior and learned behavior is a real thing. So Heather, let's um, just first kind of talk about your journey because you recently made some switches in your own nutritional habits because you were experiencing different um, energy and hormonal issues. And uh, you're starting to teach that uh, with your daughters and just making sure they're just taking care of their health first and foremost. So why don't you share your experience and just how you're doing now? Yeah. Um, so I've always struggled from a nutrition standpoint. Um, I have a horrible sweet tooth. Um, I have my vices. I eat late at night. Um, I've always been very, very active. So I can kind of get away with it, I guess you could say in a, in a way, um, from an appearance standpoint, but, um, underneath the surface, uh, lots of things were going on. Um, so, uh, just in kind of chatting with Erica a little bit, um, I switched up some stuff and cut out a lot of the processed stuff that I was eating. Um, I cut massively back on sugars. Uh, I'm talking like the sugar in my coffee, the sugar in, you know, some of the bars that I was eating and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I did it maybe three weeks ago. Like I said, I, I don't eat, I wasn't eating terrible before then, but there was some stuff going on. Um, you know, she, Erica alluded to it a little bit where I was having some hormonal issues. Um, my energy levels were super low. I had achy joints. Um, I was getting acne again and I was like, I've had acne since I was in my twenties. Um, so yeah, we made a little bit of a diet change and it was really cool because our girls who are five and almost two, um, just naturally took to what we were eating. It was kind of crazy. Um, you know, eating different kinds of meats like ribeyes and chicken thighs and chicken wings and bison and stuff like that. And Bexley, our five-year-old is always intrigued as to what we're eating. Um, so I would cut her a piece and she would want more, want more, want more. And, um, I kind of had this epiphany, like, they're just going to eat what we're going to eat. I mean, it, it saves us time. It saves us money from making, you know, separate dinners and stuff like that. And we started that transition a couple months ago when I was talking to my wife. I just said, look, like, Bex eats half of my plate of food. So, like, why are we feeding them different things versus what we're eating? Um, so prior to the, to the recent change, we started making our own homemade chicken nuggets. Um, they love chicken nuggets. And I was so – it would it – would, kill me when we go to the store and we buy the bag stuff, even if it was like, you know, healthy raised, blah, blah, blah. It's still processed. It's still frozen in a bag and processed. And it never sat well with me, but they loved it. So I was like, you know what, fine, whatever. Um, so we found this homemade chicken nugget recipe and they, Dakota, our youngest one devoured like six chicken nuggets that are normal size. And I was like, what is happening? Um, Bex loved them too. So we slowly started to make this change. Um, you know, and within the last three weeks, I'll say that there's definitely um, a complete shift of they are eating what we are eating. I'm talking, like I said, ribeyes, bison, chicken thighs, stuff like that. And it's funny because Bex will be like, Mama, this is really good. What did you do to it? <laughs> like, um, I cooked it. Like, I didn't do anything. I seasoned it a little bit with some salt and pepper. And there you go. Um, and she's five. Like, when I was five, if my mom would have put a ribeye in front of me, I would have been like, yeah, no. That didn't happen. Um, I was a terrible, terrible eater as a kid, even though my parents were very healthy and they made us eat. I mean, whatever they had, we had. So I was the kid stuck at the table for an hour after everybody because I didn't finish my dinner and I didn't want that for my kids. Um, so yeah, long story short, it's been a whole family, um, shift just to better choices. Um, 
our kids have always loved fruits. Like they are berry freaks. Um, and I'm okay with it because there's a ton of antioxidants and berries and I'm not going to tell them, no, you can't have that. You got to go eat the fruit snacks because they're cheaper. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I'm sure we'll get into some of that, but yeah, I mean, this shift has been really good for us. Um, even Bexley's like attitude. Um, and I won't say we, she's a great kid, never a bad kid. Um, but she has her moments and, you know, you hear all this, all these things, you know, wherever you're listening, podcasts, articles, Instagram, social media, about the effects that some of these processed things that are, are in the foods have an effect on their, their, you know, their mental capacity, their behavior, um, temper tantrums and stuff like that. And I wasn't, I was like, oh, whatever, that, that's a bunch of hooey or whatever you want to call it. Um, but now that I have kids, I'm like, no, I, this is real. Like, and I've seen it firsthand. So, yeah. That's a really good point to bring up with how food changes your mood and what better way to just like really like calm the kids down and make sure that they're not like ah, like throwing these crazy tantrums yeah. than giving them foods that are nutrient dense and not overly processed, not overly sugared. And I love that you shared your experience. Now, what what else did you notice about just their mood or or their mindset? Um, so more prone to wanting to, to play more prone to being creative versus wanting to go on their tablet, wanting to watch TV. Um, I think there's a direct correlation between those two things. Um, and like I said, this is just something I've noticed in my own, fi the, our five-year-old, not so much our little one. Um, but yeah, with Bexley, um, when she's eating the garbage, um, she is more prone to just want to zone out. I mean, there's no energy, no sign of life, um, less likely to want to go outside and, and play or even, I mean, our house is full of things like climbing things, like we're an athletic family, like, you know, and in those winter months, like you can either have them being active while indoors. Cause we live in, we live in Ohio. So it's, you know, the weather is not as great as Florida. Um, but yeah, I, I would say less, they're less likely to want to be active or think. Um, we just recently bought a bunch of board games that are, that Bex loves. They cause her to think they're memory games, they're um, clue games and stuff like that. She gets so into them. I mean, we literally will play like 20 games. Do I want to do that? Not, not 20 times in a row, but I'm getting to spend time with my kid. She's creative using her brain and she's not glued to a TV or a tablet or a phone. Um, and we're having a great family bonding time. So I'd say like energy levels for sure. But to me, it's like the brain fog, the zoning out and like, she would get kind of snippy. Um, you know, like she, whatever we watch on TV or on her tablet and I'd say, Hey, it's, it's time to lock it up or whatever. And it was like immediate response was like, you know, something very snippy. And then it would cause, you know, a reaction from one of us. And then it was this whole discipline thing. And I, I was very frustrated for a long time. Like, and my wife can probably attest to that where I just am like, something has to change. Like this isn't normal behavior. And it's, we're the parents. We have to do, like, we have to lead by example. Um, and that means not being on our phones. Like, you know, everyone's addicted to, and some days it's hard because work is, is always on my phone. If I leave, it's always on my phone. Um, so yeah, it, it's really comes down to leading by example with some of that stuff. And, um, think about it when you're on the phone, right. When you're scrolling mindlessly th through social media, like you're not, probably getting pumped to go work out <laughs> you're probably like man this is great I'm gonna fall asleep or I'm tired or whatever and it's like it's sunny and 70 right now like what am I doing so yeah I love hearing that and if anyone is curious about the actual science and brain metabolism behind all of this and how food impacts your mood and your mental health I talk about Dr. Georgia E, Dr. Chris Palmer all the time check the caption below and look at some podcasts that they've done. I also talk about the research at length in my book, Female Athlete High Performance. And it it is so important. Like, don't we all want our children to be physically healthy and also mentally healthy? And I just, like, I'm not a parent yet. That's why I brought you on. That's why I've had other moms on talk about this and making sure their kids are eating healthy. But I just don't understand the excuse, 
well, like my kids eat so bad or we're just so busy or eating healthy is too expensive, which it's not. And we can get into that and your grocery bills, which have probably stayed the same or gone way down. But Mm -hmm. I just, I think that's such an excuse to justify bad behavior and bad leading by example. And I'm sorry to like call parents out, but a lot of dietitians are not being hard enough on parents Mm -hmm. with this. And we are enabling this bad behavior. That's not to say like, don't have a brownie from time to time. And, you know, don't be so scared of like processed foods, but like it's the chronic and overconsumption. Too much of anything's a bad thing. But overall, like, don't we want to infuse our children with nutrient dense foods? A hundred percent. Um, you know, I, and I, I hate to say this because we, and again, we were there. I mean, and it, I'm almost, I don't want to say ashamed, but as a health professional, um, taking care of myself, my body as best I can. Um, I wasn't, we weren't doing that for our kids because it was easy to pop the mac and cheese in the microwave, pop, micro, everything, microwave, microwave, you know, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't sit well with it. And I was like, we're being lazy. Like, this is what it stems down to. We are being lazy. Like, Yes, we're both working parents. Um, you know, my wife's a teacher, so it, it works out really well where she's home at night with the girls and stuff like that. And she grinds, she busts her butt to like one meal. She they see us meal prep every Sunday. Um, Bex is involved in that now. Like if she wants to, you know, help us wash the fruits, um, help us take the stuff out of the oven, you know, whatever it is. Um, but it, it comes down to like your priorities. So, you know, like again, we're both working parents. I get it. Like sometimes the last thing I want to do on a Sunday is wash all the fruits and vegetables, cook all the meals, cut them all up and, and, and put them in the containers. I mean, it's, it, it's a process, but we go to bed at night thinking, okay, we've done our part. Um, now the kids need to eat the foods. Um, but yeah. And, and to your point, like our grocery bill has gone down. That was another sticking point for me. I'm like, Oh my gosh, we are buying all this crap and it's way more expensive than just buying the nutrient dense whole food. Um, because in in you you're more full, you're more satisfied, you don't need to continue consuming the the Cheerios and the fruit snacks and the whatever, name any kind of hostess, like whatever. And we weren't even buying that stuff. Like, I mean, we thought like, hey, we're being healthy with the Mott's fruit snacks, the that's it bars, and some of the organic beef turkey. You know, I still like the organic beef turkey. Um, but yeah, like in we were nervous about it for sure because we're like, okay, are we going to have a backlash from, from Bex? Like Dakota will pretty much eat anything. That kid is like, she was eating my scallops on New Year's Eve. So it's like, she's uh she's a good foodie, but Bex is a little bit more picky. So we're like, are we going to get some backlash from her? Is she going to be stubborn about it? Like, you know, whatever. And I was like, I think that's a, a risk that we need to take because eventually she'll just understand that this is how we eat and this is why we eat. And we kind of chatted about this a little bit. I think educating your kids on the food choices that you're making for them is super important. Um, I've had some tough conversations with Bex um, and not because she's been tough, but some of the questions she'll ask like about kids that she sees at school or the food that they're eating, you know, Um, she goes to school with my wife right now because she's a Cleveland public teacher. So they get Cleveland public school system. They, every kid gets a, a free lunch, no matter what, no matter your socioeconomic status, like you get a free school lunch. Um, at the beginning of the year, Bex was like, this is great. It's a school lunch. So there's a couple of days she came home and her lunchbox was full. And I'm like, did you just not eat? And Allie was like, well, she had the school lunch. And I literally about fell to the floor. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not having the school lunch. Like we control what goes into their bodies, not the school. Um, you know, and she'll ask questions like some of her little girlfriends or friends, like, why does she look like this? Why does she eat like that? And it was some tough conversations. And I'll never forget this. A client of mine said, look, like the best thing you can do is to talk to your kids like they're adults. Don't baby anything. That's how you get them to, you know, trust, understand, come to you, whatever. So there were some hard conversations. And through that, my five-year-old's asking me questions like, you know, is sugar bad for you? Or is this drink bad for you because it has 50 grams of sugar? And I'm honest with her. Yeah, it is bad. Does that mean you can't have it ever? No, but you can't have it every single day, you know. We always call it like holiday foods, right? Like, so a Memorial Day, we're going to go to a cookout. We're probably going to have some pasta salad and maybe a pop. Fine. You're going to do that once every couple months. You understand that that's it. Um, So yeah, like grocery bills gone down. Um, 
we're actually enjoying like my sister Lindsay got Bex like her own um like kid food cutting board and stuff like that where they're learning she's learning how to wash her fruits she's learning how to cut her vegetables like is adorable and she loves it um so yeah grocery bills down the kids are enjoying what we're eating um I'm not having to share my food <laughs> we're actually having them eat it um but yeah it's the the laziness and I like I, f- I don't feel bad anymore saying that because we were there and we were lazy and now we're not. And we're seeing so much, so much come from this it, just from a family standpoint. Like we always ate dinner together and stuff, but now like we're eating the same dinners and we're, you know, after dinner, Bex wants to read a book instead of go watch TV. It's like, there's, it just, everything gets better with better food. Simple as that. That makes me so happy. And it's it's just a win-win for everyone. And it, it is a, a family thing. The entire family has to be on board. And I love that you're getting them involved in the meal prep and yeah. taking that time on a Sunday. And I always say a Sunday is always a great time because most people are off of work. The evenings can be really slow, football's on or whatever. And, and you just take that time to prepare for the week and set your kids up for success so that they have a good nutritional environment Monday Mm -hmm. through Saturday. And we're not chaotic during the week scrambling, oh my gosh, we have nothing prepared. So let's resort to like Cheez-Its and and Lucky Charms. You have to be prepared if you want to give your kids nutrient dense foods and for them to be healthy. Now, one thing you mentioned, um, the grocery bill went down, which I saw that coming. Not surprised there. <laughs> Sa- same with ours when we started to incorporate more nutrient dense foods because you don't have to buy as many things <laughs> right. because you're so full from uh, the meats, the fish, the eggs, the the berries, you know, whatever you're getting. Uh, and you don't need to get as many of those like snacks where you're like grazing all day. Yep. So it makes grocery trips like cheaper and really straightforward. You know exactly which department you're going to. I'm going to the meats, the produce, and then boom, I'm out of there in less than 10 minutes. So yep. it's so easy. But one thing I hear a lot of from a lot of dietitians online, and I get why they're saying this, but they'll say, well, you know, ultra processed foods are good because we can give our athletes like calories and fed is better than not fed, which of course I agree, but that doesn't mean you have to have ultra processed foods because a lot of these nutrient dense foods are not as expensive and they're going to fill you up more. And also I just think it's interesting how they're like saying fed is better than not. And the audience they're marketing to on Instagram it's not homeless people they're talking to. Like, right. You all literally have a following of yeah. ECNL soccer players, parents with disposable income. It's not like anyone on your page is like dirt poor. They're paying for right. your like $5,000 a month nutrition service. So like, yeah. sure, so they, can, the they can buy meats. They can buy yeah. fish. Like, so the messaging is just like, not in alignment with the audience, which I just, I just hate the whole thing because you can go to McDonald's and get like a two or $3 burger, however cheap they are nowadays and have a burger patty and at least get protein in and replace yep. that instead of having like lucky charms and like all these sugary things. So like there's ways to do it. Uh, you can have an avocado, which is over a hundred calories. Like, I mean, the messaging is just so cringe sometimes. Yep. I, like I get what people are getting at, but also at the same time, you can be educating them on how to make better decisions if they're trying to budget. Uh, I totally agree. Um, I think that, I, I, I don't know if you shared it or I just saw it, but um, they were talking about how like Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan would eat a steak before they played and they would play phenomenal. I mean, they're one of the, both are some of the greats, but, um, and I also think it's just the stigma of like what has been normalized over the last, you know, 50 years. Right. Like, so I, we talked about this too. Um, when I was in college playing soccer, uh, cliff bars were my life. Like I lived off cliff bars, always made me feel nauseous. Didn't, didn't link it until after, but always made me feel nauseous. And then you're washing it down with a Gatorade. Again, you're literally drinking and eating over a hundred grams of sugar. Like, so you're going to feel great. Maybe that first 20 minutes of that game and then you're going to crash. And 
I didn't realize the signs of the crashing until I got into this field. And I'm like, man, I was not eating anywhere close to what I should have been eating. Even then, though, like the research wasn't saying nutrient dense food, eat some berries, eat an avocado. It was, again, like, no, you should be eating this, that, and whatever. It's like, I'm doing that. I don't feel good. So why do you keep telling me that? Um, so I think it's about breaking some of those just old, old, I don't even, they're not wives tales, but like old habits and old ways of thinking that it's outlandish to eat a, an avocado before a game, or it's outlandish to throw, you know, a cup of berries in your mouth before you go out and play versus like those cup of berries are a handful of M&Ms. You know, I mean, I've run marathons, trail, mar- half marathons, whatever. And the stuff at the aid stations, I was like, this is great. Like we got M&Ms, we got chips and we got peanut butter and jelly. Like these are all my favorite foods. Um, but again, like while you're eating that and your body's processing it, like most people either get nauseous or their stomachs are in knots and then their race is ruined um, to the point where I would start carrying my own stuff. Um, the last marathon I ran, I was carrying all my own stuff. So I'm like, I can't eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, chips and M&Ms while I'm running. Like it just, I felt like crap. Um, so yeah, I think it's, we have, we have to do some myth busting and say, look, like it's okay to have this kind of food before you play versus Mm -hmm. the Milky Way or the cliff bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think some people think they're being healthy when they're really not. And like you, you didn't really put the pieces together until much later on. And that reminds me, like when I was growing up and like Gatorade was the only hydration drink around and we we still had it. I mean, get, get your electrolytes. If that's all that's available. Yes. Have it. Like, don't be like, Oh, I'm not going to have a Gatorade because like, Oh my God, sugar. If that's the only thing available, have that. Like we're not saying like starve yourself. Like don't do that. You have to be smart on the road. But I remember growing up when Gatorade was the only thing available before all these other great drinks came out. I would get so sick in the second half, even if I had like a sip of Mm -hmm. Gatorade, like my stomach would get cramped and I finally put the pieces together and I was like, this is not working for me. And you have to really know yourself as an athlete. And nowadays I'm a huge fan. I know you are too, of the, the element hydration packs. I'm not a partner to them. I don't make money off of them, but I just love their product and I love sharing about it because it is mainly um, sodium, potassium, and magnesium, and no sugar. And Heather feels better on it. I feel better on it. You don't always need sugar for energy, despite what mainstream people are saying. But it's just so amazing to finally have something where, wow, I can be hydrated. The packs are like super small. Uh, They're as big as like your thumb. And they're easy to just throw in your soccer bag for a tournament. So be prepared. Be prepared with hydration that you feel good about. Be prepared with snacks that you feel good about. There has to be some preparation involved. And if you forget, because you're human once in a while, still eat what's at the concession stand at the tournament. Do not starve yes. yourself and be like, oh my God, like sugar or processed foods. You still have to put something in your body and just know it's like not, you're not going to die. It's not going to wreck you. I think there's a lot of fear mongering sometimes around processed foods, but for the most part, be prepared and make the best decisions you can make. Yes. And I think the key word is like preparing, right? Like, like you just said, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of the families and stuff that are, all this is being marketed to, like they have disposable income and they have the means to prepare the food. So it's like, if you know, you know, we just had a group go down to Florida, I think, yeah, this past weekend, um, a bunch of ECNL girls and stuff like that. It's like, and I know all the parents, like, and I know that you could, you know, fuel them properly. Um, but I, we're such a, a, a society of comfort and convenience that it's like, and, and I, I was, I mean, in certain respects, I still probably am at fault for some stuff, but um, yeah, we have to get out of this mindset that it, you know, it's, it's convenient, it's easy, and I don't have to put the work in. Like, it's just like when you're training, like if it was easy, convenient, and you had to put the work in, then everybody would be the next best soccer star, basketball player, whatever. Um, you know, I think that this is going to start separating some of those athletes from the rest where you are really putting your nutrition first. Um, versus like a second, you know, a secondhand thought like, oh, man, I I need something an hour before my game, but I don't have it. Oh, there's a Milky Way at the concession stand. I did that in high school. I mean, like, um, again, just to fuel my body. But yeah, it's not. It's crazy too. like um, the places that I work, 
where we have big field houses and tournaments and stuff going on and the, the foods you see these athletes running around with, I was just at one this weekend and I'm like, this is insane. Like, um, and all those parents could have been well prepared bringing like a lunch box or a snack box or whatever. Like you have, you have the opportunity to do that. And and it's fun to prepare. I mean, you can, again, like you guys do make it a family event, like the Friday night before tournament, like make some, mm-hmm. prepare some sandwiches, uh, with, with your daughters or like cook up some, some strips of steak, uh, or like throw some blueberries in there and just like, make it a fun thing. It, it doesn't need to be like this hassle. Oh, I got to cook. It's like, no, let's get excited about it. Let's get yeah. excited that we're setting I don't think it takes more than an hour to do this, <laughs> especially no. as you get it become a veteran in all of this. It can take a lot less. You get used to it. But get excited about taking that hour on a Sunday or a Friday night to be like, wow, like we are ready for the weekend or the next seven days. And we're going to have so much energy and our mental health is going to be better and our muscles are going to be more recovered and not inflamed. And my, my daughter is not going to be insecure about acne and her skin from all the sugar. That's another thing that's not talked about enough. And I didn't put that piece together until my thirties, which sucks. <laughs> like, Same. Same. I tried everything. I tried yep proactive. I tried like retin-A and I almost went on the Accutane train, which thank goodness I didn't, but like finally put the piece together that food impacts skin health. And I know a lot of teenage girls are insecure about that. So it's like, don't we want our girls to have healthy skin and be confident and be glowing and also have good hormonal health and less painful periods. And don't we want them to be in a good mood most of the time? Don't we want their brains to be on fire at school and focus? So yeah, take that hour a week to prepare and don't tell me, oh, Erica, well, my, you know, my kids just don't eat healthy. We just don't have time. It's like, no, don't you want that for your daughters? Yeah, you should ask yourself. <laughs> yeah, you should be making the time. I mean, I think I threw this up on my social media the other day and it was, it was more so about like screen time and stuff like that. But it was like, what, what, why do you have kids if you aren't going to set them up for success in the, in the most simplest form? Um, I mean, my, I feel like I had a really great example. My, both my parents were very active and very healthy and everything was centered around family. Um, I don't think it was very rare that we didn't eat together and eat all the same stuff. Um, and yeah, like Allie kind of changed my mindset on the whole grocery shopping thing a couple of months ago, where she's like, we need to be grateful that we can provide the food that we can provide and not look at this like, ugh, we're going to the grocery store again. And, ugh, I got a meal prep. So I like, I like how you said that, like make it exciting and make it something fun. Um, Cause you can make a miserable situation way more miserable with your attitude versus like, I, I like that perspective you know. grateful. And again, most of the families that are listening, most of the families that are on the social media nutritionist page have disposable income. So yeah. be grateful that you have that to be able to provide nutrient yeah. dense foods. But even if you have to budget, you can do it on a budget and your whole family can thrive. hundred percent. What do you think about, um, I know we've talked about this. What do you think about, um, moderation, this moderation that just be balanced? Like, what do you think of that, that culture? Is it helping us or is it actually causing us to have a worse behavior around food? Yeah, I think that it's, it's clouding our judgment on things. And I can, I can attest to it because that was my slogan. Oh, it's all moderation. It's all moderation. Meanwhile, like I am great Monday through Friday at like four. Um, and then like my, my vices, like I don't, I don't drink alcohol or anything like that, but I eat, like, I love the carbs. I love, I love the sugar. So like, you know, before we had kids, Allie and I would go out on a Friday night and we would have, say we went and got pizza. It'd be like, it'd be pizza, pretzel knots, the beer cheese dip. I mean, it would be everything. It'd be, I mean, it's surplus of calories and bad stuff was insane. So every Friday night and then Saturday, I just wouldn't eat. I'm like, oh, I'll just fast, fine, whatever. Felt like garbage. Um, and then Saturday night, we'd go out with friends and again, repeat the same process. So it's like, I was great all week, felt great all week. And then in moderation, every single Friday and Saturday, and even sometimes Sundays, I would throw all inhibitions out the window and I would eat whatever I wanted to eat. Because in Look, my brain, I was like, is that Monday really, comes- 
is that moderation though? Because no. you, like what, what, what is moderation? Like, like you said, is it yeah. eating healthy Monday through Friday and then going off the rails on the weekend? Is it, right. you know, having like candy, like what is moderation? That's why I think it's the worst piece of advice ever. It is. It's a hundred percent is. Um, and, and like I, I, I did this cycle, I mean, oh my gosh, like up until probably, so I did 75 hard in 2021 and I cut out as, as much of it as I could. And I was really strict for the first time in my life and I felt great on it. Um, and I kind of continued those principles throughout the year, but wasn't as strict. Cause then again, moderation, moderation. And then the next year would come around. I'm like, okay, I need to do 75 hard again, but I was only doing a hundred days of this you know, I don't even call it strict diet. It was just not eating the crap. Um, and then summer would hit and I'd be like, oh, we're going to go out. We're going to do this, you know, whatever. And, I'm, and it was like this awful cycle um, until probably like maybe two months ago. Um, and then I saw what you were sharing and I'm like, all right, she's on to something. Um, and well, I, I get so out. happy. I just get so happy for people. Like yeah. when, when, when they see the light, like, and it's not yes. like, you know, we're, we're, we're like selling something. It's just, I'm selling you back to you and what right. your body craves. Yeah. Like there's no, su- there's no, su- you don't need supplements. Like you don't need all this extra noise. Like it is yep. the simplest way of living. It, it really, and you're happy, like yeah. from a mental standpoint, from a physical standpoint, like there was something and it was like, um, we talked about this about the moderation, like the, the shaming of the foods. Right. And I jokingly, but seriously said, I wish somebody would have shamed me for eating chocolate when I was a kid because it it created (laughs) this horrible addiction of sugar for me. Like, and like I said, I can get away with it. I have, you know, both my parents are just naturally active and thin and whatever. Um, so the appearance is, Oh, that person's healthy and she eats really well. No, I had a horrible I mean, still have a horrible sugar addiction. I mean, we were talking about it before. I was doing really well for three weeks and then fell off the wagon and felt like garbage, like literally like I had like a, the worst hangover of my life and I don't even drink. So it's like, it was, it was wild to see the elimination of sugar and then adding it back in, you know, pretty, pretty much in excess in one big serving was terrible. And, um, I wish somebody would have said when I was a kid, like, Hey, that is going to, you're going to get addicted to that. And it's going to ruin parts of your life. Not that like, you know, sugar has ruined my life. However, like it has created a a terrible addiction. I have, I have really bad anti er, really bad inflammatory responses to it. Mm -hmm. And my GI tract goes insane when I have too much of it. And I think it's because of the excess I had as a teenager and a college kid, because my mom limited it as much as she could, but then I got to college and I was like, sweet, I can do whatever I want. And that's when the horrible habits for me started because I was, I was unhinged. <laughs> I didn't have my mom being like, absolutely not. Like we don't do that. Um, so yeah, I think the moderation balance is, um, is a bunch of crappy information. I mean, it's too vague. It's like, who's to define yeah. what, what moderation is. And right. you make a good point. I, I wish someone called it out for what it was growing up yeah. and and informed me, okay, there are foods that are bad and will give you a reaction. Yeah. Again, I want to repeat, if you have something from time to time, yes. you're not yes. going to die. So there, right. there's, ex- there's extremes in nutrition. There's people who are totally like, oh my gosh, like, processed foods are like the devil. And then you have people that are like, yeah, like how, you know, like do whatever you want intuitive eating. And I'm like, no, let's kind of come in the middle here and just pick nutrient dense foods first. And then what you found is when you do reintroduce the the processed foods, you have a bad reaction, which eventually turns into a natural deterrent from doing, you know, doing that again. And eventually your brain chemistry does change and your body craves what's, what's good for it. And yeah, I think there's just a lot of people on the internet that they just don't want to offend people and they, they want to continue to justify people's bad eating behavior because they want followers and they want to be the good guy. And I'm like, no, someone like needs to be a little bit stricter, especially when we're talking about female mental health, 
female yep. hormonal health and polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is still so rampant nowadays. I mean, mm-hmm. I get messages on a weekly basis about it. And yeah, I just think people just are afraid to offend and be hard on people. And it, it's like in strength and conditioning, there are bad exercises that I would yeah. not give for a soccer player. Like yeah. w- we're not going to do certain things and we're going to prioritize other exercises first because it's better for your field performance. So like, yeah. I just don't get like why in nutrition, everyone's like, there's no bad foods. Like we should stop labeling and let's do flexible dieting and moderation yeah. this and moderation that. And I'm like, no, like I, it's coming from a well-intentioned spot, but it, we also have to like realize what it could do to girls. And I, I think it has the opposite effect on them and, and yeah. make them like feel kind of weird about counting calories. And, and, and it's like, when you have nutrient dense foods, you don't, you don't count calories. You, you nope. just eat till full and then you get on with your day and then you eat when you're hungry again. And that's, that's true intuitive eating in my mind. I completely agree with that because prior to a a lot of these changes, our whole family just were big snackers. Um, And now that we're diving into this, it's like, well, we're big snackers because we're not actually feeding our bodies, you know, with the proper nutrient dense stuff. And that's why we're just constantly snacking people just don't want to offend people and oh, yeah. just be like, yeah. Hey, like you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So there was a book that I read, it was called the coddling of the American mind. And it was, <laughs> I talk about this all the time on here. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my oh, God. Yeah. So, funny. <laughs> so it was a great book, but they talk about that phenomenon of like, where like you have the right thoughts behind it, but the execution is terrible. It actually does the opposite of what, you want it to do right so by telling people like oh it's okay like there's nothing you know there's nothing um there's no such thing as a bad food it's like okay if there's no such thing as bad foods then why are we seeing that only 12 percent of the american population is considered healthy why are we seeing diabetes run rampant high blood pressure run you know all these things so if there's no bad foods then why does all this exist like you know i would love for somebody who has that mindset to be like, oh, there's no bad foods to tell me like, okay, if there's no bad foods, then why do we have all these things happening? Why do we have, you know, and I'm not saying that all foods, all bad foods are causing a mental health crisis, but I think they play a major role. Um, So yeah, you can't tell me there's no bad foods, like, because you don't want to offend someone like, and like I said, I wish someone would have, I don't even want to say offended me, but would have said like, one that cho- you're going to get addicted to that chocolate or that chocolate is is going to cause you excess body fat and that excess body fat is going to cause you all these things if somebody would have said that to me or whoever else maybe i would have thought twice about picking up that ho ho or whatever um so yeah and 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 you know i'll i'll give an example of when it's like okay like what do you do in a certain situation when there's ultra processed foods around because i don't want girls to like be so like, like scared around it. So for example, during my wedding, we got a wedding cake. (laughs) We got chocolate peanut butter and like chocolate buttercream. And it was amazing. And Mm -hmm. of course, at my own wedding, I'm going to have my wedding cake, but I'm going to realize it for what it is. The next day, I had a headache. The next day, I had a zit on my face. I never get acne, except when Mm -hmm. I like reintroduce some of these foods. And that day I was like, you know what? Like it was my wedding. I had cake and it is what it is and upward and onward. And I'm looking forward to getting back to what I normally do. And that's giving the energy and the nutrients my body needs. And I could move on without like, oh my gosh, that was so bad. I'm going to like gain weight. Like weight's like the last thing I think about. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I got a zit on my face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Or I have a headache or I'm inflamed or whatever. Exactly. And then my rosacea came back and you know, it it just was what it was. But then a few days later when I was back at what I was doing, energy was up again, feeling great back to work and it was fine. And like for like young girls who maybe have like a team outing, I know like my high school team used to always like get ice cream, like every other week and every other week's not going to kill you. Like, again, it's not going to kill you, but like, just know, like if you have a reaction or your skin breaks out, that that's why. And it just is what it is. And sometimes those reactions can provide like 
natural deterrence for people as they get older and they're just like you know what it's not even worth it anymore um I feel so that. Some, some people can moderate and do that and move on I don't have an addictive personality so I can move on after something like that but some people and you need really need to know yourself with this some people who have a treat it turns into a full-on binge and that's when it becomes <laughs> see and you know yourself it's me, um, it's me 100% yeah so some people have to abstain altogether Yep. There are very few people who can who can like really moderate. Yeah. <laughs> whatever yes. that means. Yeah. Whatever um, that means. Because like you said, it, it, sugar really is addictive. Uh, Crazy. And it gets your your neurotransmitters firing and you're like, oh, yeah. I don't want just one Oreo, but I'm gonna have the whole oh. box. <laughs> yep. So you That's, just need to like, know yeah. yourself. Like if you have to abstain altogether, then go for it. If that's what makes you happier. If you can moderate and move on, uh, my husband's the same way. He can have an ice cream and just move on and get back to life. Just know yourself. Yeah. And um, one thing I want to go back to how you said, you know, when you eat and then you're you're looking forward to get back, getting back to your normal routine. Um, like, I think that's huge. Uh, I know that like when I was sick a couple of weeks ago, um, I mean, I wasn't eating a ton. I had a stomach thing going on, but um I was really excited to go grocery shopping and get all the foods that we had been eating because I I missed out. I don't, basically like four days of not eating the normal foods. And even this past weekend, like we talked about it briefly, I uh, had a a, a a relapse, if you will. Um, but I I am one of those people that I can't just have one or I can't have a nibble. Like my wife is good about that, and my sister Lindsay is great about that. I envy them. Um, I went overboard and basically caused it like a, a toxicity, almost like a a carb or a sugar or gluten and dairy, all those things that I had almost eliminated for three weeks back into my system. And my body was like, Oh no, we don't like this anymore. Um, you know, raging headache the next day. Um, my stomach was in knots, like it felt like razor blades. Um, and you know, and I, I think back to when I was in high school, I could, I could eat that and be fine the next day, like whatever, no big deal. And now as an adult, you know, I'm almost 40. Um, I think beating my stomach up like that all those years and just being like, yeah, whatever I'm feeling it now. Like this is a major deterrent now, like where I, we go out, like this kind of started with the alcohol. So if it, the acid reflux and the alcohol would make it worse. So I completely, as of almost two years have not had a drink because it's not worth it for me. Um, so it was a major deterrent. Um, and this past, this past episode will be another major deterrent. Um, but that's not to say I'm not going to eat a brownie or have ice cream with my kids in the summer after, you know, we play baseball or whatever. Um, I'm still going to do all that stuff. I just know that I have a limit <laughs> and I don't want to pass it. You know, I think um, food freedom is talked about a lot, like getting freedom from food and not being so obsessive. And when you have the nutrients you need, your brain is nourished and you can mm -hmm. have a better relationship and you can like just know yourself and be like, you know what? I'm like really looking forward to just like feeling good all the time because once you see the light kind of like you and your family has, you're just like, oh my gosh, like I didn't know I could feel this amazing. Like I thought I was healthy before, but yeah. then when you get like a surge of energy and just mental clarity and you wake up every day like excited for work you're just like dang like this is awesome it's it's not even I wouldn't even call it a diet and I've talked about this a lot a, a diet is like restrictive it's it's monotonous it's something you don't look forward to but this is this is actually a lifestyle because yeah. a lifestyle, you want to feel good to function in everyday life, whether you're a young soccer player or a student athlete or you own a business or you're a performance coach. I mean, this is about a lifestyle. And I just think too many people are complicating nutrition way too much on the internet. Too yep. many people, the mo the moderation cloud, crowd included. I mean, I'm sure you guys can tell I'm not a fan of the moderation crowd. <laughs> Uh, if anyone can right define there. it for me, then maybe I'll get on board. But I yeah. just think there's just so much bad information. And I always tell my athletes, check on the M's with any nutrition lifestyle that you're on. Menstrual cycle. Is it regular? Is it not painful? Muscular. 
do you not have muscle soreness anymore? Are you recovering faster? Are you lasting the final minutes of the game? Mood. Is your mood more stable? Yeah. Those are usually the, and motivation is the fourth. So the four M's motivation. Are you excited for the day? Even for boring high school and middle school. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of my girls who are on the proper nutrition plan get the four M's. Yeah. So after six weeks of trying something out, check in on the four M's. Mm -hmm. And if you got all those, then man, you're on the right plan. But if you don't have all those questions need to be asked, even with the sports dietitian who you thought had the right information, check on the four M's. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. Um, Yeah. And I know like for me, and we've talked about this a little bit, it was the changes in my, my menstrual cycle. I was like, what is going on? Like, it it was weird. I've never really had issues like that. Um, But it was like the last six months to a year where I was like, it was just irregular. Like I, it was crazy. The symptoms I was having, I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, am I going through menopause already? I'm like, I'm way too young for that. Like, and my mom's like, no, you're, you're crazy. That's not what this is. Um, so yeah, following your, your stories and stuff, I'm like, hmm. I mean, she's onto something there. Um, so yeah, I think I love the four M's. That is awesome. Um, so with your I'm menstrual de- cycle now, like, would you say, uh, periods are less heavy and painful? Um, cause I know it was debilitating for you as well as your wife. Yeah. I, so she had a lot of like the physical symptoms. I had a lot of the mental and emotional symptoms. It's, um, and nothing back on it. I've had, I've had that probably like on and off since my twenties. Um, and I've just worked through it. I'm like, whatever, like, this is what I'm working through. Um, but yeah, so me, it was like horrible mood changes and like horrible. I mean, like just withdrawn. Like I said, I was being emo. Like I just didn't want to, didn't want to talk, converse. Like, you know, I'd put on, put it on for work because I, you know, I'm coaching kids, so I, I can't be like that, but I'd get home and just be like, blah, like, yeah. And I hate that. Like, I didn't want to be like that around my kids or around my wife because like, they're excited when I come home. Um, and you know, the mood, the menstrual cycle, um, stuff was all connected. And um, muscular. How was muscular? muscular? So this past year I've went through some stuff. I've had two knee surgeries. Um, and the first one was terrible. I, I didn't listen very well. I tried to come back too soon, which is really dumb. Didn't listen to the PTs. Like, and I retore my meniscus within like a month of having surgery. Um, so that I don't know if I can attest to just because I hadn't, I haven't been doing my normal, um, my normal stuff, um, up until maybe a week ago. Um, cause I had surgery again in December. Um, but I will say the motivation that yeah. I'm always like a go getter. Like I'm very disciplined in certain aspects of my life, always consistent. I'm always pumped to get a workout in or go get a run in and, I think that was the big thing for me was like, I don't really want to do any of that. Like I wasn't looking forward to going and lifting. I wasn't, you know, and I was just cleared to go do all my stuff. Like I got cleared and I was like, I'm not excited. Um, and this was in the beginning of January. So it's recent. Um, and like I said, the last couple of weeks, like it, the fire's back, I'm itching. Um, you know, I want to compete again in whatever, like, you know, trail running has been the big thing in my adult life, trail running and obstacle course racing. Um, so I'm pumped to get back to that knees feeling great. And I think that this, this new lifestyle change, um, I'm going to see a lot of benefits just from like my body composition, um, just my joint integrity and stuff like that, where I've never had knee issues or anything like that up until like the last year. Um, and maybe that some of the stuff was attributing to it, just chipping away over the years of, struggling with my nutrition. Like I I wouldn't say I'm the definition of a yo-yo dieter, but dabbled in keto here and there. I've dabbled in, you know, you name it, I've dabbled in it. Um, and I always just, I never saw success in any of it. Never felt great. Um, so I would just go back to eating, you know, the relatively balanced diet. Um, but yeah, as, as of right now, this is it for me. Like I'm so happy with how I feel and, and stuff like that and how it, my kids are watching us do it and they're loving the food. It's like, this is a no brainer. It's a no brainer. And, and what was the, the biggest thing you, you added in? Was it just various cuts of uh, fatty red meat? Yes. Like I love red meat, but you know, there's a giant stigma that's out there that it's like, Oh, moderation of your red meat, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, like the, I was just a a sirloin person, but now I'm eating ribeyes, bison, um, different, um, like kielbasa stuff like that. Um, I'm eating 
you know, the uncured natural bacon, whatever, like the, you know, it, the, what the crazy part is like, why does bacon have sugar in it? <laughs> like, if you go and you see there's sugar in your bacon, do not get it. Um, anyway, that's just me. Um, but yeah, so like adding in that stuff and one, it definitely upped my protein. I know I was majorly deficient in the protein department because we'd eat chicken breast almost every night, but like, you know, would finish maybe three fourths of it. Um, because I would be eating, you know, the other stuff first, whatever. Um, or I had been snacking all day and then I wasn't hungry for dinner. Um, now I'm excited to eat chicken thighs. Like they are superior to me. <laughs> like I love them. Um, but yeah, so I've upped my protein just naturally changing, you know, um, some of the stuff that we're eating. And I will say that just in the last three to four weeks, um, and now that we're ta talking through this, I definitely don't feel like I'm as sore. I think I'm recovering faster. My sleep is much better. Yeah, um, your sleep. I remember you telling me you don't wake up as much as you used uh, to. I'm a, I was a horrible sleeper my whole life. Like I'd yeah. get up, this is terrible, in the middle of the night when I was a kid and I'd go eat like Oreos and stuff. Like I was a binge eater in that way. Um, and it carried on into my adult life. Like when I met Allie, she was like, did you get up at 2 a.m. and go make food? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, that's not normal. And I'm like, well, that is what it is. Like, that's just what I do. Like, so cut doing that within the last six months and I'll add it in the new stuff and I'm sleeping more soundly. I'll still get up like once a night to go to the bathroom, but I go right back to bed and I wake up in the position that I fell asleep in, which is super rare for me. Like I'm a toss or a turner and I won't that's say awesome. every single night is great. Like the weekends are a little bit more crazy. Just Bex wants to sleep in our bed. We're watching, you know, a movie with her and you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I will say my sleep is much better. Um, and it's, it, for me, it's been the mood and the the menstrual cycle stuff. Like that was a big struggle for me. I was like on the verge of going to see my OB and being like, what is going on with the notion of them wanting to put me on birth control to manage the symptoms? And I didn't want to do that. Like I did that one time in my life and I hated it. Like it didn't help me in any way. It made me feel almost essentially worse from a mood standpoint. Um you know, and it was one of those ones where like, I just didn't have a cycle. And I'm like, that can't be good for you. Like you're naturally as a woman supposed to have that happen. Um, and my mom was so against it, but I was like, no, I'm miserable. I want to go on it. And I think I did it three months and I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this. And my doctor was like, oh, you went off of it. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm okay. Like <laughs> I'm cool. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of all of this. <laughs> I, again, I'm really happy for you. And it, it is really good that the four M's are drastically improving. And again, just to repeat them for everyone with any nutrition lifestyle that you're on, check in on menstrual cycle, muscle, uh, mood, and motivation. Those are the four. And for the most part, those should be locked in most of the time. You should be feeling great and groovy. Uh, if not, definitely be asking some questions after that six weeks and that adaptation period. But Heather, th this has been awesome. And I think it's going to be really inspiring for a lot of parents to just make sure that they're being prepared and really setting up a healthy environment for their children and making sure their kids are healthy. But also, man, this is also for the health of the adults. I 100%. mean, don't, don't adults want to feel amazing too? This isn't just for young athletes. I mean, if you're not playing a sport, you still need to be performing for career or as a, as a mom or a dad yeah, and sure. a friend and a loved one. I mean, you have to have thriving health. And yeah. when you don't have your health, you, you don't have much and life can get really hard. Um, yeah. So I, I hope this conversation helped everyone. And if you guys are doing a lifestyle that works for you and the four M's are dialed in, please share in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions for Heather, I've linked her Instagram in the caption below. So if you want to know more about what exactly she's doing beyond certain things that she mentioned in this episode, feel free to reach out, reach out to me. I'll also link a, an episode I did with uh, Cynthia Montilione on uh, nutrition and also registered dietitian Michelle Hearn. They are some of my favorites uh, as far as sport performance goes and nutrition. So Heather, thank you again. And everyone else, I will see you on the next episode.